It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to the EdTech Mondays Nigeria Show, a platform to facilitate critical conversations on the use of technology in transforming education in Nigeria. My name is Chinye Luakpa, your host, and it's good to be here again. Conversations and debates on gender inclusion have permeated society and the world for a very long time. While different measures have been taken in various sectors to ensure gender equality is achieved, the transformative power of education to address gender imbalance has not been fully harnessed. A 2023 report by UNICEF shows that girls' enrollment rose from 1.76 million to 2.87 million representing a 64% increase. Although the school enrollment rate for girls has increased, other harmful gender norms and imbalances of power that give boys and men an advantage over girls and women still exist. As technology gradually transforms how teaching and learning is facilitated, the show this month will aim to explore the potential of technology to remove gender-based learning barriers and drive gender transformative education in Nigeria. Today, I am joined by Abigail Anazamak, an education and gender equity advocate, promoting the inclusion of women and girls in STEM fields through experiential learning and intergenerational dialogues. She is a program associate at Relearn, the education practice of CC Hub, and is a recipient of numerous awards, including the top 10 essayists in Nigeria for UNFPA's essay competition on comprehensive sexuality education for girls. She is a 2023 Next Generation Foresight Practitioner Fellow with the School of International Futures, amongst others. Join me as I welcome today. Abigail Anazamak. Thank you for joining me on the show today, Abigail. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Our topic of discussion is technology for gender transformative education. That's a lot of buzzwords <laughs> in one topic. So I'll leave it to you, our distinguished gender and education advocate, to break that down to our listeners and viewers. What does gender transformative education mean? And what's the role of technology in all of this? All right. Thank you for that question. And gender transformative education, really so much English, but it basically means that education, we acknowledge the transformative power of education to address social issues, including gender justice. I'm not talking about gender transformative education. It's easy to just think about it from the lens of we're talking about girls and they've come again and they're saying women and all of that but it goes beyond just women to also seeing how are boys included what are their challenges how are we looking at it where does education come to play and how can we use technology to address imbalances from both the boy side and the girl side as, side as well so when we look at gender transformative education from a girl's lens there's been clamor for saying girls can get pregnant and they are not able to continue their education or they get married off early we are in Lagos, but if you go to other parts of Nigeria, even in some southwestern states, girls are still married off early before you now go into the northern states. And they can't continue their education. But technology has a role to play in saying, you may be in SS3, you've gone through this challenge, that does not mean learning should stop for you. Mm -hmm. And when you look at a guy as well, maybe not here, maybe up north, they recruit them into the army or maybe a fighting group. I don't want to call names. And their education also stopped. They're also disenfranchised, but we're not talking about that. And they may be recruited, but they still have a sort of safe space. And people in those spaces can use technology to say, still learn this. They've constructed you, yes, but you can still continue your education through technology. So that's just it in summary. Thank you, Abigail. And what you've done is very profound because most times, and it's a general misconception, that when we hear anything, gender by default we think females you, we think women and girls but forget that boys also are yeah. <laughs> part of the gender 
conversation. So gender transmissive education also speaks about the boy child, not just restricting it you know, to the girls. girl child. So now we can see an increase in the enrollment of girls in schools across Nigeria. What other issues does the concept of gender transformative education aim to address? Are there any examples of technology solutions addressing these issues? All right. Thank you. So one issue when we say, oh, gender issues now for girls, we also have a way of thinking about it in the light of education. But when we're in after testing, increase in enrollment rates, what other things possibly keep girls out of school? There is a lot of study that the World Bank has done, and they are saying that this, in spite of the increase in girls' enrollments in school, some of the things that still keep them, we have, as of 2019, there was 41 point something percent rate of girls completing junior secondary school, and for boys it was 46, almost equal, but why is the girls all still low? So they did a lot of studies across Africa, and they realized that gender-based violence is one of the major causes why many girls still don't complete their junior secondary education. And I'll still come back to say many of our listeners today may be in the modern part of the country and they cannot relate, but these things happen very like seriously in high measures in some rural communities and girls have to stop going to school. So I know that um, there are a lot of like solutions or women groups that are trying to address these issues, many women empowerment groups trying to address these issues. And one way that they use technology to address that, which I'm, which I'm going to encourage school leaders to also look into, is having like safe spaces in form of toll free line, free lines, where if somebody says a negative thing to you and you've been so suppressed and made to be scared of the person and you can't report, there is a line you can always call or there is a button you can always press and report that so that help can come for you as a girl or help can come for your student, your female students that may go through that and they are able to get the right support and remain in school. And same for boys. Boys are also being molested and it may prevent them from coming to school. We've had incidences of where older women are molesting young boys, but they can't share it. So one way technology comes to play is if you are using tablets and apps in the schools, we can also want to start putting like, do I say guidance and counseling buttons where you can just press and report something as a child and maybe it can be anonymous. Those are other measures that could be put in place just to protect both boys and girls and help them to stay in school regardless of challenges. So in one country I was reading recently and there are issues of rape. Maybe a girl is going to school. The boys have always attacked them on the road and raped them and because of the law of girls don't want to go to school. So what parents now is that they follow them to the school gates and say, okay, they've tried their best. But general transformative education is, is saying it is not enough to identify that these are barriers. What do we do? How does education change the perception of children? And that's where we now come into the curriculum that are being designed, which are now more facilitated through technology today. I'll stop there for now. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, in all of this conversation, and still drawing back to the increase in girls' enrollment in school, it has gone up by 64%. From that 64% increase in girls' enrollment in education, and from my own experience growing up, we know that girls tend to do better, you know, in some challenging areas. I remember when I wanted to go to school, when I wanted to get into senior secondary class, and there were those barriers on you can't do the sciences because it's not female-like. You know, you can't go to engineering. It's not for girls. You can't do architecture. It's not for girls. But you also see right now that with the introduction of technology, more girls are taking up these courses, taking up these fields, and are doing very well. So is there any psychological play on the influence of technology being able to spur girls on to want to do more because that's really where you know the role of technology comes into play for gender transformative education because you see that girls are doing much more they are being more receptive they are the technology is unlocking their creativity so they are being more expressive in how they can learn you mentioned how even though you might because you might have dropped out of school because of 
you know, maybe a teenage pregnancy or things like that. With technology, you can go back to school. You can learn from wherever it is in Nigeria. So is there that, you know, little cosplay for how technology unlocks them psychologically and it's being able to open them up to transformative learning? So thank you for that question. And I'll say that social media plays a very huge role in helping girls see themselves through the lens of other women, the few women who have gone ahead to um, build successful careers in STEM. And laudably, many of these women have taken it upon themselves to organize empowerment programs for young girls as well, bringing them into the room with other senior women who have succeeded in the field, helping them to understand, to learn about their stories, their struggles, their triumphs, and also giving them chances, sometimes in the form of mentorship, and sometimes as far as internship opportunities in their organizations. So this brings girls in, makes um, the STEM field, experience with the STEM field very immersive, and makes them want to do more. So that's one way. Another way that technology comes to play is um, something as little as the sound um, voiceover in our learning apps these days we see we hear women as well maybe before on radio you will hear hello good morning welcome to nigeria i am this but now with technology bag learning apps that we use we hear more of girl voices behind it which encourages even children to want to learn you see coco melon a lot of children want to listen to this song and as much as they use male voices they've also incorporated a lot of female voices then technology has a way of showing you things. So I've talked about how their uh, mentorship programs that girls attend. But beyond that, we have programs on Zoom. And Google means that girls can attend virtually and participate in this program regardless of where they are. So it's reducing that barrier of access in terms of location. Also, I know that a lot of people recently have been talking about how um, when they were young, in the charts for alphabets, you see a nurse represented as a woman. So telling you that even if you are going into STEM, the career for you as a woman most likely is to be a nurse. And engineers are always represented with men. So one way that um, technology can also help to address that is the gender roles that are being portrayed in our stories, in our technology back learning applications, and also show more women doing like. Technology can be used to change gender narratives around gender roles. That a man was always do this and a woman was always do this. So as children are reading those stories, even from infancy, from um, preschool education, they can already see ah, a woman is the one doing the engineering thing in this story and a man is doing something else. And that's also to make people see that, to make boys see that being a man is not always about having veto power. It's not always about going the extra mile and doing beyond yourself. We need to make boys, technology can be leveraged to make boys see positive masculinity and girls to see female leadership and social emotional learning takes a huge role in this. And I've said a lot. <laughs> yes, you have. And I can also layer on some of the things that you have mentioned in how, you know, the influence of technology unlocks 21st century skills for, for, um, both boys and girls and sometimes does this even without you know putting it in their faces so a child who is probably learning in Nembe or who is learning in yola or any distant part of nigeria might not know that there are such things as you know critical thinking or problem solving know those words but when a child is given a technology tool that is timed you know and they have to solve a math problem probably using math ninja and it's timed what they have them being able to focus their time and their energy to solve that problem in the given time, you know, is a skill that they learn and that is unlocked because of, you know, technology. And this is gender transformative, you know, education. I was also going to ask a question, which you have said, you know, as Shrin already, I was going to ask, what role do edtech product designers and innovators play in pushing for gender transformative education? And you spoke briefly about it and even how they are designing, you know, solutions and incorporating more first contextualized, you know, as you've called it, voices 
voices that they can relate to, that have accents that unlock some part of their emotional sides, then I do that bit. I know that I have spoken to a, a product designer on the show and there was even the conversation on the type of people you portray in your graphics and it's being people that they can relate to. So I do have other ways that um, innovators, edtech product innovators can support gender transformative education. All right. So one thing that readily comes to mind is if you, when we are talking about a tech and we are saying inclusion, one of the things that we say in inclusion is um, you should consider the internet connectivity of different communities and maybe your solution should not be so high tech that somebody in other communities cannot relate to. So same comes for gender. If we are using characters to deploy something, there should be an even balance in the number of male characters and female characters. And one other way or a, a, a line that helps to marry that is when some applications try to use a name that can either be for male or for female. Mm. So it does not look like uh, if I have to use one character, maybe some but a male can be a summer, a female can be a summer, no problem. Mm. So it's attractive to both male and female mm. yeah. gender. So one of the ways that I see that we still have a lot more work to do, and this is going to the financial sector now most of their bots for example uh, are females and maybe it's making people feel like oh, only customer care people it's only females that so that career lens is being distorted so education can come to play in letting people know that oh a boy can we can use characters male characters as well as female characters male voices as well as female voices if there's a regulation to say if you use this number of males in your app, there should be an equal number okay. of female characters that I represent. And maybe color mix. So I'll not say color is gender-based, where we know that girls somehow are more different a particular yeah, color, color to a particular yeah. gender. So let's also incorporate that mixture so that the color of an interface does not already look um, unwelcoming so for a particular gender. gender. Yeah. Thank you so much for that because when a lot of us interact with a tech product, we do not understand the level of work that goes into putting out the various scripts, you know, that we learners or users interact with. You've talked about color hues. You've talked about, you know, ensuring that even how you name your characters, if it's just one character, it is a character that it is a name that can be feminine or masculine and does not, you know, tilt more to a particular gender and that is why when organizations are staffing when you're building your team you need to factor in you know people safeguarding experts diversity and equity and inclusion specialists people who understand these little nuances and how they will play out on the psychology or the reaction of a learner when using that you know a tech solution thank you so much for that apical and now to our final question. What policies should guide the use of technology in promoting gender transformative education? Okay, thank you so much for that question. And I like how you mentioned the diversity, equity, and inclusion specialist part. So schools may not have the power or they may feel like that is the whole new thing to start embracing. I'll just let them know that they don't have to be worried. They just need to ensure that their guidance and counseling departments are upskilled with regards to gender transformative education and they are safe spaces for students to report. If students cannot report physically to the guidance and counselor, how are we even using the technology solutions that we use for teaching and learning? What buttons are we putting there to help students report incidences where they feel like they are being attacked? For the agenda and so on and so forth and another thing that i want to mention is where we censor the kind of languages that children use on different platforms where they may be taking their learning um for online safety um harassment bullying and so on and so forth what kind of ways do we if, if a child maybe is using an app and they are typing certain words this is maybe a call to people who are building education solutions to say, can you build a detector that when a child uses a certain negative word, they may be saying it to a boy, they may be saying it to a girl, see your head. That's the question. <laughs> that's, not, that's a phrase, 
but the app already picks it as this thing can affect the other person's mental health and make them not want to come to school or this thing is a, 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 a direct attack at somebody's gender and may not make them want to come to school so if there is a way to put all those sensors and when a child is typing it suggests another word the way grammarly will tell you oh this sentence is too long cut it short mm -hmm. this is a suggestion so use this phrase instead or if you press send as long as that thing is abusive it will not allow you press the send as long as it is against somebody's gen agenda it will not allow you press send once you rephrase so that's one good way to also promote use technology to promote gender transformative education thank you so much abigail i almost know what to let you go because this last you know beat you just dropped here just rang a bell in my head for artificial intelligence that's where you know you've been able to train these models mm -hmm. and sort of humanizing them a little bit to detect you know nuances and various nuances for words that children might use when relating with themselves in learning applications and you also mentioned something very profound um how we sometimes give attention to learners with special needs when we are designing a tech solution so perhaps the government and other stakeholders, policymakers, can also put down a bit of policy that says that people who are building, you know, edtech um, learning products are also thinking more about gender transformative education mm -hmm. and seeing how they can put little bits that balance out, you know, gender in how they are designing their products. And very important, you mentioned we need to train more diversity, equity, and inclusion specialists to support people who are building because I can't you think if you are a product designer or you know just a code you know you just write code what is your business with DEI so we need to support people who have this you know um, expertise and supporting them to support the people who are building learning so, so thank you so much Abigail for dropping this wonderful nuggets on the show today it was good having you here Thank you, and it's a pleasure. So to you, our listeners, we'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this month's conversation? How can technology support gender transformative education? Are there any instances, organizations, or people who you know are using technology to push for gender transformative education? around you would love to hear from you and love to hear how they are doing this send us a message or an sms via 0703 165 would love to hear from you you could also join our very active telegram and whatsapp communities to continue this conversation believe me so much more goes down there in those communities so simply search for EdTech Mondays Nigeria to continue the conversation after now. And if you know anyone who has missed out on this very, very interesting conversation today, no need to worry. Push them on to our Spotify channel at EdTech Mondays Nigeria or they can watch a replay on CC Hub Africa on YouTube. Thank you for being a part of the show this morning. Next week, we'll be continuing the conversation on the role of technology in unlocking gender transformative education. Until I come your way, same time, same station next week, keep pushing the barriers of technology in education. It's bye for now. EdTech Monday is proudly brought to you by MasterCard Foundation and CC Hub.